Hi everyone, glad to see you again. Are you ready for your PSPM? Since PSPM is just around the corner, I would like to share a few exam tips that might be helpful for you to score PSPM with flying colors. Please listen carefully. Let's get started. We start with the format of Chemistry SK015 question paper. There will be only one question paper, which consists of six subjective questions that include topic 1, 2, 4, 5, 6 and 7. Students have to answer this question paper in the given booklet within two hours time duration. However, students are recommended to answer all the questions within one and half hours and they use the remaining time to check back their answers. This question paper contributes 80 marks. Here are the marks allocated for each topic. Topic 3, Periodic Table, is excluded from the final exam since this topic have been chosen for the individual assignment. Here are the tips on answering PSPM questions. Read the question at least three times. Read, understand and highlight the clues in the question. Allocate sufficient time for each question. Answer the easiest question first. Label each of your answers precisely. It is recommended to answer the question in English. Please use black or blue ball pen to write your answer. Your answer must be written in the answer booklet provided. Use the new page for each question. Please refer to the table of relative atomic mass and the list of selected constant value and conversion factor that are given in the question paper. Make sure you read all the questions until you reach end of question paper. There are six types of questions that are usually asked in the exam. Definition, calculation, diagram or graph, explanation, compare and contrast, and arrangement. These are the tips to answer definition type questions. The answer must be in complete sentences and contain all the key words. Enhance your answer by giving appropriate example, equation or mathematical expressions. This is the sample of definition type question. The first sample answer is wrong because it only shows the formula. Remember, for this type of question, the answer must be in complete sentences and should include all the key words. For the calculation question, you must show all the steps in your calculations. Please write the correct formula and equation involved. Usually, one mark is given for the formula. Substitute value precisely as given in the question. Never round of any value at the early stage. Please use at least four decimal places during work. For the final answer, please use the smallest significant figures given in the question. Units are all insisted. Please remember, no unit, no mark. This is an example of the calculation question. The first sample answer is wrong. This is because, the calculations do not include the formula and the final unit. Please remember, always write the formula completely, and with the correct final unit. Here are the tips to answer questions involving diagrams or graphs. First, you must understand the keyword given in the question. If the question asks to plot a graph, you must plot the graph in a graph paper given. If the question asks to sketch a graph or diagram, you can draw it in the exam answer sheet provided. Please label the x-axis and y-axis as well as the graph title. For the orbital diagram, please label the subshell and draw electron spin with the half-headed arrow. For the orbital shape, don't forget to label the subshell and x, y, and z-axis. Label all important data given in the question such as the concentration reactant and product, time at equilibrium with the correct unit. Please remember, only use a pencil to plot or sketch the graph or diagram. This is an example of a question involving the orbital shape. The first sample answer is incorrect because, it does not label the subshell, and the three axes. Please remember, you must label the specific subshell that is 5s, and x, y, and z axis. This is an example of a question involving the orbital diagram. There are three mistakes that exist in the first sample answer. 
The orbital diagram of J is not labeled with the valence subshell, and the electron spin should be drawn half-headed arrow. For the orbital diagram of K, the subshells are not labeled correctly. For this kind of question, you should start with writing the electronic configuration of J and K. Then, identify its valence electronic configuration. After that, you can draw the orbital diagram of the valence electron of J and K with the correct labeling, and a half-headed arrow for the electron spin. Here are the correct techniques to answer the explanation type question. You may answer in point form but please use a complete sentence. You can use simple language but not in short form. Your explanation must include all the key facts with the correct terms. Identify, underline, or highlight all the keywords to make sure you answer all the questions. Usually, one mark is given if the question asks you to state, draw, write, or name. However, if the question needs you to explain, suggest, show, determine, deduce, identify, or rationalize, the mark given will be more than one mark. This is an example of the explanation type question. The first sample answer is incorrect because short forms and symbols are used in the explanation. The second answer is the best answer. Even though the explanations are in the point form, but all the sentences are in a complete sentence. The explanation also includes all the key facts with the correct terms. Here are the correct steps to answer the question that needs you to compare and contrast. You may answer in point form, but please use a complete sentence. Tabulate your answer in a table. Your explanation must include all the key facts and correct terms. Compare the similarity and differences for each characteristic. This is an example of a compare and contrast question. You can use a table to present your answer. You can answer in point form, but please use a complete sentence, with all the key facts and correct terms. Remember, you must compare the differences for each characteristic. Here is the correct technique to answer questions that involves an arrangement. You can use the symbol of smaller than, between the item to show increasing, or ascending order. You can use the symbol of greater than, between the item to show decreasing, or descending order. Another option is, you can use the comma between the item, but must draw an arrow below the arrangement, to show either increasing, or decreasing order. Lastly, you must mention all the items, in the arrangement in your explanations. This is an example of a question that involves an arrangement. The first sample answer is incorrect because the arrangement is not label. Please remember, arrows are not allowed in the arrangement. The second answer is correct. You can choose either to use the symbol of smaller than, or the comma between the item, but please remember, you must draw an arrow below the arrangement, to show the increasing order. It is compulsory to label the increasing order. I really hope that, this video can guide you to answer the final exam, in the correct techniques. Don't ever give up. Struggle till the end. Most important is, don't stress. Do the best. That's all for now. Good luck with your final exam. Till we meet again. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel as moral support and a token of appreciation. Before we leave, I want you to think about this inspiring quote. Success doesn't come to you. You go to it.